You are listening to the Navigating Adult ADHD podcast, where it's all about education, support, and coaching for adults with ADHD. I'm your host, Zena, a late diagnosed ADHDer, here to help you unpack the challenges, frustrations, and the positive side of living with ADHD. With my no BS approach, I'll help you to better understand your unique ADHD brain and how you can work with it to feel better, increase your self-confidence, improve your relationships, and ultimately achieve your goals. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm so excited to be with you today and talking about how to have your own back when you have ADHD. Now, if you are enjoying the podcast, I just want to give you a little reminder if you could leave us a review. Hopefully it's five stars, but I appreciate it may not be. But if you can leave us a review, it does help other people to find the podcast and also understand what it's all about. So I would be so grateful if you would take a second to do that. And I just want to say this weekend just gone, we had the New Zealand ADHD conference in Auckland. And I appreciate some of our listeners are from overseas and going, what? (laughs) What do you want about? But for fellow Kiwis, it was an incredible event. I think there are roughly a thousand people in the room, you know, humans with ADHD, as well as those who work with them, support them, love them, etc. So it was a beautiful event. um, And I was one of the six speakers who got up on stage and shared different elements of ADHD. And ultimately how we can work with our ADHD brains and our, you know, those of us who have ADHD, how we can support them. And I got to tell you that I'm going to tie that into the podcast today because while I loved speaking at that event, I got to tell you some of the behind the scenes for the lead up to that was kind of challenging. And I really did have to have my own back. Now, It was Maya Angelou who famously said, I got my own back. So I have to put that quote in there and I have to give her credit because that is where it all originates from. Now, if my voice sounds funky, (laughs) it could be the first time you're listening. I promise it doesn't sound like this usually. (laughs) But if it sounds a little funky, if I'm a little flat, that is because the conference finished on the Saturday. I woke up Sunday feeling not quite right like I was getting a bit of a cold and by afternoon, you know, mid-afternoon Sunday, I was losing my voice. So for the last few days, I have had no voice and I had to cancel all of my client calls. I haven't been able to share my joy and excitement and, you know, all of my takeaways from the conference because I've just had to be quiet, (laughs) literally lost my voice. So I'm finally able to use it today, but I'm still a little bit nasally. So there we go. If I sound weird, there we go. We're going to roll with it. So when we talk about having your own back and developing the practice, right, this is the most powerful thing I have ever done for myself. And today I am going to share with you what my practice looks like. And I'm going to talk about, you know, what it means to have your own back and how you can actually make this a part of your life too. So I want you to think of the person that you love the most, okay? It could be, you know, one of your kids and it, I'm not I'm not trying to encourage you to pick favorites, but just pick just pick one for the sake of the exercise, okay? <laughs> but it could be, you know, your one of your kids, it could be your sister, it could be your partner, your best friend. So I'm going to use an example from my life. So I'm just going to pick one of my partner's boys. Not, I'm not picking favorites, but I'm just going to go with the youngest, right? He's eight years old. His name is Carter. Now, if you were to imagine saying to him, right, whoever you have picked, if you were to imagine saying to him, hey, you're a useless piece of shit. You need to try harder. You're pathetic. You're a failure and you're a total waste of space. You're never going to amount to anything. You're a total loser. Okay, if you were to imagine that somebody said that to your person, what would you do? What would you do if somebody spoke like that in front of you to your favorite person, the person that you love the most? 
my guess is you would shut that shit down, right? You would stand up for them, maybe even get mad. You would sure as hell defend them, right? You would not stand for it. And if your person, right, like I'm going to go with Carter, okay? If they then came to you and said, oh, but they were kind of right about this. So if Carter came to me and he said, well, were they not right about me? My heart would break. It would literally break. I would sit down with him and I would tell him all the reasons why it's not true. I would tell him how incredible he is, how he is literally the smartest kid I know, right? True story. He's the smartest kid I have ever met. Like this eight-year-old teaches me shit that I don't even know. Okay, don't tell him about that. (laughs) But I would tell him that I believe in him. I would tell him I know that he has what it's ta- what it takes and he's going to do amazing things in the world. Again, I truly believe that. So all of that to demonstrate what it looks like to have someone else's back. Okay. That would be me having Carter's back. I would be defending him, right? I would speak up for him, right? I would fight back. And then I would, you know, if he was doubting himself, I would tell him all the reasons why what that person said was complete bullshit. Okay. We do this already for the people we love and care about. We already have their back. We stand up for them. We believe in them. We cheer them on. We pick them up when they fall down and we dust them off. Now, imagine doing that for yourself. Wild, right? If you had your own back, how might it impact what you do with your life? How might it impact your decisions? How could it impact doing hard things or leaving your comfort zone? How would you speak to and treat yourself? So years ago, I'm going to share a story and I don't think I've shared this on the podcast. So buckle up because it's a good one. Years ago, I decided to address my fear of dating. And I've told you all, if you've listened to other episodes, that I was terrified of dating and I avoided dating for over 10 years. And a lot of that had to do with RSD, right? Fear of being rejected and criticized, not thinking I was good enough, all sorts of things. And so on my very first date, okay, I've decided I'm going to overcome this fear or I'm at least going to try and work through it. I've decided, you know what, I really would like to find someone to share my life with. And I, I got to the point of like having conversations with people through dating apps and agreeing to meet somebody. So I met this guy, okay, the very first date after over 10 years of not dating. Here's how it went, okay, buckle up. So I went to my friend's apartment and she gave me a drink. It was more vodka than it was soda because I was terrified. I was so nervous and I am an overthinker. So of course I had thought through every single element of the state except for one. And I said to my friend who was a seasoned dater, I said to her, Hey, when I meet them, do I, do I shake their hand? Do I hug them? What do I do? And she said to me, look, you just let them lead. If they go for the handshake, go with it. If they go for a hug, go with it. She said, it's fine. And I was like, okay, great. That's, that's the one thing I just wasn't sure on. Thank you so much. Great. So anyway, we're meeting, I think at five o'clock and it's five o'clock. It's after work on a Friday. Now we're meeting to go for a walk. And so I'm dressed in active wear. Cause I'm like, Hey, we're going for a walk. It's on an active trail. So I'm going to wear my active wear. Okay. So I've got on like, you know, your Lululemon tights, a singlet. I've got a a jersey tied around my waist. I've got my trainers on. And I go down to our meeting spot at five o'clock and he rocks up and he has just finished work. Okay, so he is in like a button down shirt with dress pants on and fancy shoes, you know, like fancy dress shoes, those. Bearing in mind, he's just finished work. So, okay, that's fine. And he goes in for the hug. Okay, and this guy is like six foot five. So he's freaking tall, I swear it. So I had to kind of climb him a little, like kind of climb up awkwardly to hug him because he's so tall and he bends down and we hug and it's awkward, but we hug. That's fine. Okay. Now we start going for this walk and I am so nervous. I am so terrified. I just want it to be over. So this is a walking trail I have done many times in my life and I walk it probably the fastest I've ever walked it in my entire life and this poor guy he's wearing dress shoes right he's probably got blisters and he keeps saying things like oh there's a seat 
and oh what a nice view to look at right like he's hinting at stopping and I'm just like I want to get this the fuck over with right so we power walk so fast around this trail and we get to the end now this is when it dawns on me like this is normally like a 30 minute walk maybe 40 if you're you know enjoying it I swear we did it in about 20 maybe even less we get back to where we'd initially met and it dawns on me that I have not thought through the ending do I hug him? Do I shake his hand? Do I talk about day two? What do I do? And I just can't take any more awkward. I can't take any more anxiety. I'm just done. Like I'm tapped out at this point. So I look at him and I jump on him like because he's so friggin tall. He's six foot five. I kind of climb him like a tree and I lose all control of my voice as I give him a hug. Right. I'm tree climbing him to try and hug him. Okay. I lose all control of my voice as I say, so it was really nice to meet you again. Thank you so much. Bye. I kid you not. That's what I did. Then to make matters worse, I got to get the fuck out of there because I'm just, I'm done. I'm out, right? I'm, I'm tapped out. So I turn around and I go to cross the road and there is a car U-turning in front of me, but I don't got time for that shit. Like I just got to get out of there. So I start running. I start running and I just literally ran away from him. I ran all the way back to my friend's apartment. I ran away. That's it. That's what I did. (laughs) Oh, my friends. Well, I'm laughing, right? Like, let's be honest. It's pretty funny now. Like, I will, I I crack up at this now and I enjoy sharing the story. But at the time, I tell you what, at the time, that was my first date in over 10 years. And I was wanting to find someone to share my life with. I was not laughing right? I actually felt like shit. I felt awful. My brain was full of nasty things. Okay. My brain said stuff like, oh my God, you fucked that up. You can't do this. You're never going to find anyone. You do not have what it takes. You suck. That was an epic fail, right? And add to that all of the feelings of RSD. I literally left. And when I got back to my friend's apartment, I felt like a complete reject and a total failure. I did. I felt awful. And I want to tell you what I did, okay? Here's what I did. I talked back to my brain. I talked back to the asshole voice in my head that was telling me how terrible I was, how awful I was. And I said, no. I said, no. You know what? I'm actually really fucking proud of myself for doing something that I have avoided for years. It was scary and it was hard and I damn well did it. So no, you do not get to talk to me like this because I took a huge, scary step today. I left my comfort zone and I am so proud of myself for choosing to do that. That's what I did. I stood up for myself. If you are the one bullying yourself inside of your own head, it can literally feel like nowhere is safe. I'm going to say that again. If you are the one bullying yourself inside your own head, It can feel like nowhere is safe. So my friend, it is time to start talking back. Okay. Now, I laugh when I say like talk back (laughs) because like I grew up with parents who would tell me off for talking back, you know, like answering back. And now we have like teenagers in the house, got a couple of teenage boys and I get it. Okay. I get it. (laughs) however hear me when I say talking back gets rewarded because it gets your attention okay talking back gets rewarded because it gets your attention and in this case when you talk back to yourself you're getting your own attention Mm -hmm. now I want to address the kind of weirdness I don't know this or maybe difficulty that comes with speaking to yourself inside of your own head Okay, because it sounds like it's coming from you in your voice. So you can't tell the difference necessarily between your brain yelling at you and you telling yourself something because it's all in the same voice. It all sounds the same up in there. Okay, so let's just create two different categories here, right? We're going to separate out the shit your brain says, okay, 
So there's the shit your brain says, that's one. And two is the things that you say to yourself. Two different things. Okay. It's kind of like your autopilot is giving you a running commentary, but right? That's the shit your brain says. It's the autopilot giving you a running commentary, but at any stage you can take over and fly your own damn ship anytime you like. Okay. That's you talking back. That's you taking back the control. So you hear a thought in your head and you can't always control that first thought. Okay. Perhaps your brain just says to you, you suck. And you hear that. Okay. And it's in your voice. So it sounds like you just said it, but here's the best part. Right? While you can't always control that first thought, you can control the next one. This is where you get to talk back. This is where you get to say, no, I just did something brave and I am proud of myself for doing it. So I'm just going to be with that. Right? Or you might say, no, you know what? I deserve better. I'm not going to speak to myself like that anymore. I often like to say, what would you say to a friend in this situation? What would you say to a loved one in this situation? Somebody you really care about. Tell yourself that. Now, here is an important part. Your brain, okay, your autopilot is not going to magically stop saying mean shit to you. But the more you practice talking back, the less you will believe the mean shit the less it will affect you. And over time, you will start to change the things that your brain actually says to you. You will change what the autopilot says. Okay, let me give you a visual of this. Um, I'm not sure where I heard this story and I might have used it before, but if you were to imagine a farmer, right? Farmer comes out of his house every day and he hops on his tractor and he gets on his tractor and he drives the exact same path down to the paddocks where his cows are. Okay, and by doing that over time, he's worn grooves into the ground, right? And he's dug grooves into the ground that become the road that he travels on every single day to his paddock where his cows are. Now, if you were to imagine that that farmer came out of his house and every day he just turned the wheel to the left 1%, right? He shifted his his hands on the wheel just 1% to the left, 1% to the left, 1% to the left every single day, right? Over time, he would move out of the groove in the road and he would slowly end up moving, veering to the left and he would end up in a completely different place over time, right? You got that visual? Now, that 1% shift in your head adds up. And then one day you're going to catch your brain saying nice shit to you. And you'll be like, what the heck? Right? You'll be blown away by how far you have come because you continue to talk back to yourself and stand up for yourself. Rule number one, okay, is you're going to practice not treating yourself like an asshole. This means you don't talk shit about yourself. Now, I say the word practice very deliberately because when we're learning a new skill, we practice, we mess up, maybe we skip a few days. That's okay. This is not about perfection, okay? It is about continuing to practice until it just becomes a part of who you are. And listen, listen when I say this, if I can do this, if I can learn how to have my own back and make this a part of just who I am, I promise you can. Because I started from a place of utter self-loathing. I could not look at myself in the mirror and I never said anything remotely nice to myself up in my head. So trust me when I say that yes, you can develop the skill of having your own back and it will change your life, literally, okay? I'm not just being dramatic and yes, I am dramatic, but it will change your life, okay? So I'm going to tell you again how how to do this, right? But I'm also going to share with you how I did it in regards to this conference that we've just had. So how do we do this? We do it by treating ourselves the way we treat the people we love and care about the most. Okay. And there is one rule. We don't treat ourselves like an asshole. And that means we don't talk shit about ourselves. Okay. 
Left unsupervised, our brain is quite literally like a toddler running around with a knife. It ain't great. (laughs) Right? Your brain is always going to fill in the gaps with the negative. We lean towards the negative. Okay? So we need to talk back. That's the very first thing. Right? We talk back because that is how we stand up for ourselves. That is how we support ourselves. That is how we develop this skill, right? This practice of having our own back. So let me share with you how I did this in the lead up to the conference. Okay. So I had applied to be a speaker. I was selected to be a speaker at this conference. And while yes, I have done a lot of speaking and just so you know, I used to be terrified of speaking in public right? Like literally I was like most other people on the planet, like it's the most common human fear is like speaking in public. I used to be fucking terrified, right? Like I was sick on speech days at school, kind of terrified. But over like the last, I would say five-ish years, I've been going to Toastmasters and I've started speaking regularly. Now I speak, you know, in front of say 150 people is kind of like my comfort, the, the, the amount that I would do on a regular-ish basis that I'm fine with, okay? 150 people. However, this conference was a thousand people. And to my brain, I'm like 150 to a thousand, like that math ain't mathing. That's a shitload of people. I'm going to (laughs) die. Right? My brain is very traumatic. That's how it felt. So, in the lead up to this conference, while I was so stoked to be a speaker, I started to freak out. Okay. I was like, oh my God, who am I to do this? Okay, imposter syndrome kicked in because I'm like, well, you know, this person's got a PhD and this person's a psychiatrist and this person's a doctor and this person's a, all of that comparison came into my head and I started to feel like an imposter. I started to doubt myself, right? I was anxious. I was afraid. Like, what if I get up there and I can't remember anything? Like all of it going through my head, all of it, because I'm human, just like you, human with ADHD. And guess what? I let myself feel it. I did. I was very deliberate, right? Instead of hiding from it and pretending like it wasn't happening, I actually allowed myself to feel it all. And I was very deliberate in using my emotional regulation skills to self-soothe and regulate. So for me, that looked like I did a lot of walking, walking without my device so I couldn't distract myself. And I, I tapped in like, what am I feeling on the inside? What's going on for me? How am I feeling? Why am I feeling this way? Okay, I'm anxious. What am I anxious about? Oh, I'm anxious about the conference. Tell me why. Why am I, what am I worried about? What's, what's keeping me awake, right? I did a lot of walking and I used a lot of EFT tapping. We got a whole podcast on that, okay? But walking actually supports the production of dopamine and serotonin and it supports emotional regulation. And I also use my emotional regulation tools like tapping. I will literally walk, go for a walk and I will tap. I'm not kidding you. I'm walking along, other people coming towards me and I'm tapping on my head and around my face and my body and people are probably like, what the fuck? And I'm like, you know what? I feel so much better for doing it. I don't even care what you think. (laughs) Seriously, makes so much of a difference. So I used my, my tools, like the walking, the tapping, the breathing. I was very deliberate with different breathing techniques. I used the physiological sigh quite a lot. And I will put some links to these things in the show notes. But I use the physiological side quite a lot on the actual day. And any time I found myself kind of starting to panic or worry about it. Um, And then I also did a lot of self-coaching when I needed it. So what that meant is if my brain was, you know, really occupied with it. And if I had all these strong emotions with it, right, first I would regulate my emotions and soothe. And then I would do brain dumps. Okay, get everything out of my head. What is everything I'm worried about? What are all the things I'm thinking about this conference? And I would dump it all out of my head and onto a piece of paper. And then I looked at those thoughts and everything on the piece of paper and I corrected some of it. And then I kind of questioned some of it. And I got really clear on what's the outcome I want here. Right. The outcome I want is, you know what, I just want to get up and I want to do it. And I just want to be really proud of myself at how far I've come. That's it. That's the outcome. Right, because I know how scared I am. I know how this is requiring me to leave my comfort zone. I also know I can do it. Right. However, like this is going to be the most people I've spoken in front of. So I want to be proud of myself for doing it. And I just want to do it. That's it. That's the outcome. So that was really simple. I knew what my mission was. And then I looked at 
why am I a good person to have been selected? Why am I a good person to be on that stage? And I had to remind my brain of all of that stuff because it had totally forgotten. So I focused on asking myself more empowering questions because my brain was like focused on all the disempowering ones. Like, who are you to do this? Right? So I, I switched it to asking empowering questions. So I spent time on my walks, right? And during my brain dumps, looking at what I was also likely to experience on the day. And I was very intentional with this. Like I walked myself through it rather than trying to tell myself, hey, it's all going to be fine. I'm like, no, I know I'm not going to feel fine when I wake up, right? So I addressed all of my concerns and I worked through them. Effectively, what I'm demonstrating here is how I had my own back. How I supported myself, how I believed in myself, how I helped myself through the hard stuff and how I celebrated the wins along the way. I remember I woke up in the morning of the conference and I went, yeah, today's the day. Let's fucking go. Right. And I was just stoked that my brain offered me that. Like my brain was like on board and super supportive because I'd been so deliberate in, you know, regulating my emotions, looking at my thoughts and just all of this stuff, right? I'd really had my own back in the lead up to it. So my brain just woke up and was like, yeah, I got you. I was like, awesome. I need that today. And then I got off the stage and I was just so proud of myself. Like I just went straight to, you did that. And I'm so proud of you. You did it. Right? It didn't matter how it went. I had no idea at that stage how it had gone. I pretty much left my own body, but apparently it was awesome. But I just got down and went like, I'm so freaking proud of you for doing that. Like you did it. Like that was the goal was to do it, to not die. And then you get to be proud. (laughs) We nailed it. Right. And that's another element of having your own back is celebrating your wins, telling yourself when you are proud of yourself, looking back at how far you've come. Right. That is a part of having your own back. That's exactly like I've just shared with you how I did it this past weekend and my friend I really want to invite you to begin practicing having your own back one percent at a time this is not about perfection just one percent at a time how could you have your own back today I guarantee it will be the best thing you ever do for yourself Huge love, my friend. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye. If you are loving what you're learning here on the podcast, but you still feel like your ADHD is holding you back, I can help. Using evidence-based coaching tools and my own experiences, I'll help you to manage your emotions and feel better, to increase your productivity, grow your self-confidence, and create the life that you were meant for. Visit xenajones.com slash thrive and schedule an ADHD support session to get started.